Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do a little cleaning of the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. Uh, this is a fairly new shotgun, and this will be the first time I'll be taking it apart and cleaning it and putting it back together. We're going to take you through the whole process, basic disassembly and reassembly just for basic maintenance. Uh, there's going to be some supplies that you're going to need to do this, so first of all, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, if you want, you can get yourself some Cleanse Oil Field and Range Cleaner. It is my favorite. Uh, it's over at cleanseoil.com. I don't have a discount code or affiliate link, but I've been using it for a couple of years now. Stuff works great. Otherwise, Break Free CLP made by Safari Land does a good job. Cans look a lot different now. They've since changed the label. I've had this can for a couple years. We're going to need some sort of a solvent to clean out the barrel. So I recommend some Hoppy's 9, number 9 gun bore cleaner. Stuff works really good. I also have a little needle oiler. I got this one from Cleanse Oil, but I know Rem Oil makes some other companies have them. It's got a little tiny needle on it. You can use that to get the uh, finer points of lubrication if you need to. For just general wiping everything down, cotton patches are great. You can also use an old cotton, cotton t-shirt that you cut up into squares if you want to. Uh, just for convenience sake, I get them pre-cut. Uh, I'm going to use a bore snake, although you can use a traditional, you know, shotgun cleaning kit with cleaning rods. We'll talk about that in a minute. Bore snake is kind of nice. I just pull it through a couple times and we're basically going to be all set to go. Although we will not be using this to apply the solvent, uh, the gun bore cleaner, if you will. Uh, power swabs are kind of nice. Uh, these don't break like uh, Q-tips will, so tipped and power swabs are like three bucks a pack. They come in really handy also for some fine detail work. You're going to need basically like a hex set or an Allen key set to get the screws out for the uh, the barrel clamp that has the quick detach points on it. So you're going to need a basic tool set for that or just at least an Allen key set to do so. Uh, I also like to use an old nylon brush, cleaning brush, or you can use old toothbrushes if you want to. Um, these work really, really well. Now, the best thing you probably could do is go out and get yourself a little 12-gauge uh, shotgun cleaning set. It's going to come with the bristle brush that you need and the bore mop, the jags that you need to push the patches through and so on. Now, this is for a 10-gauge shotgun, okay? Um, I do have the brushes for a 12-gauge, but since we're using the bore snake, we really won't use all of this, just a few parts of it. But these are like 12 bucks, and they usually come with the uh, gun oil uh, and or uh, a barrel solvent that you can use too, or a CLP cleaner. Very nice to have for just a couple bucks. You really can't go wrong. Otherwise, I think we're about it. I'm going to put some nitrile gloves on here to keep the powder residue and all these chemicals off my hands. And uh, we're going to get started. Now, now, first of all, obviously, we want to treat every firearm like it is loaded. So let's pretend that this is what you're looking at. Let's just say that uh, you don't know if it is loaded or not. Just go ahead and pull back on the cocking handle. You can check the receiver and see that it's empty. You can cycle it a few times. Okay, nothing comes out. We are empty and we will go ahead and move on. All right, now just a couple things I wanna tell you before we get started here. Um, I do leave the choke tube in until after the barrel's clean, then I pull the choke tube out and I'll explain why once we get there. The manual does say that you should clean the gun before you take it out the first time and that's because they use assembly oils to get the parts to go together, to get everything to, to function smoothly as it's being assembled. But you don't want that crud being built up the first time you take it out. So you definitely wanna clean it before you take it out there. Um, everybody has their own method for cleaning shotguns. You know, what I might be showing you could be the opposite of what you do. But this is what I do, and I'm basically following the manual as closely as possible. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll take this clamp off the uh, magazine tube and also the barrel. There's a screw on this side with the head, and then on the opposite side, you'll have to flip it over. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove those screws. There might be a, a nut there also. And this is used to keep your, your quick detach point uh, barrel clamp M-lock slot in place. So just go ahead and loosen that, take out the screws, and then we can remove it. Another thing too, um, I may be putting a headlamp on just to highlight certain parts so you guys can see better. I don't really need it in the work area that I'm in, but for stuff to show up on camera, it's always kind of a different uh, situation. So if you see me put the lamp on again, I'm just trying to highlight certain areas that I want you to pay attention to. All right, unscrew the screw, just take it apart, and set those pieces off to the side, and we will move on to our next step. All right, next up, we'll go ahead and unscrew the uh, magazine tube to take that off. Once you've taken off that clamp, you can do this. Now, for maintenance on this, if you want to wipe this out with a cloth, you can, depending on the environment that you're operating in, but this is just polymer, so we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side. Okay, after that, we'll just go ahead and slide off the hand guard. Set that off to the side. You can definitely see that regulator, how large that is, and the recoil spring that comes with it. Now, when it comes to this hand guard, if you want to, you can wipe this out with a cloth that does have a little bit of residue in it. So I'm just going to hit this with a uh, lint-free cloth. I don't think we have to do any kind of lubricant or anything like that. So uh, we'll go ahead and just wipe it out. Okay, so pull back on that charging handle a little bit, and your barrel's going to slide right out. And you can see that machining wheel that's on there as soon as you take it apart, okay? 
All right, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. I think we'll probably do the uh, barrel cleaning first, and then we'll continue with the bolt removal and such, so we can kind of do this just one little phase at a time. Now, something you might notice, this little extension and this little tube right here, we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. We're just gonna wipe this off with a soft cloth, and we'll just set that off to the side also. The reason why we have this extension on here, I think is so that this is able to use the A1301 hand guards, if I'm not mistaken, or vice versa. So that's why they have this little extension plate that's on here. Um, as for the, uh, the piston and so on, we're just gonna leave everything as is right now, but let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Okay, next step, uh, this is going to be a little bit messy, so you want to make sure you don't get this on your countertop. We're just going to take some of the uh, Hoppies 9, we're going to dunk our patch into it, and then we're going to push that through the barrel, just uh, scrub it around a little bit. So we'll come back and do that. All right, so again, we're using a bore solvent here, so it's okay if there's a lot on your patch. Just kind of turn it around a little bit, kind of swirl it through the cylinder, or through the uh, barrel. Go and push it out at the end, and you can bring it back. Now, I don't ever do this with a, with a bristle brush. I don't ever go reverse, but for this, it's not that big of a deal. And we'll show you what it looks like. Now, this is just test fired from the factory, okay? This has not actually been shot yet. We're gonna kinda rub this area here too because this has a lot of residue on it already. So look how dirty that is. That's just uh, from the factory itself, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, let that sit for about probably three to four minutes. Just kinda let the barrel marinate as that kinda does its thing. And then we'll go ahead and run the bore snake through it a couple times and then we'll put lubricant on the bore snake and run that through. Okay, okay, so just in case you don't like bore snakes, that's totally not a problem at all. So just go ahead and take your bristle brush, put it on the end of your cleaning rod, go ahead and uh, grasp the barrel and just press from the back. You can ram this through a couple times. Make sure you don't pull it back, or at least I recommend you don't. Run that through two or three times, and then we'll come right back. All right now, at this point, just go ahead and put a few drops of oil on your bore mop that comes with your cleaning kit if you happen to have one. If you don't have one, you can just use a patch. That's totally fine. We're going to push this through two times. Check the barrel, see if it's nice and shiny. If it isn't, we can rinse and repeat. You can run the bore brush through again and the swab through again, or patches if you have to. So just go ahead and push that through a couple times. All right, if you decided to go the uh, bore snake route, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and put a couple drops of oil in front, a couple drops of oil in back of the uh, bristles. Pull this through basically two times and you are good to go. So just go ahead and drop the weight in on one side we go, go ahead and just tilt your barrel down. All right, just go ahead and uh, pull that through and you should be all set to go. Check your board, make sure it's nice and shiny, free of obstructions, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do, you've got a self-regulating, self-cleaning gas system right here. Um, all, the only thing you're really gonna service or remove from this is gonna be this little piston at the rear. It does have a little, it's kind of almost like a spring that goes around it, a little tiny piece of steel that's kind of flexible that gives it tension, that keeps it in place. You're just gonna go ahead and pull that out. It is a little tiny bit dirty. Now you wanna keep this as oil free as possible inside because there's a lot of gas that's going through here. And so you can wipe it out with a soft cloth if you need to. It does say that you can wipe it out with a bristle brush. But you, again, you wanna keep the oil out of here. So those of you that are Ultima A300 owners, you guys let me know if you do the same thing or if you have any kind of lubricant you ever put in there. The manual says not to. Um, I will put just a single, single drop of oil on my brush. And I'm gonna use that to scrub this off, but then I'm gonna make dang sure that it's nice and dry when I'm done with it. And that's just so I can get some of the carbon off this thing from test firing. So we're just gonna bristle brush it, hit out the inside of it, okay? Go and scrub that a little bit. It is just a little bit dirty. Okay, and we're gonna make sure this thing is completely dry and then we're going to put it back in. Okay, so this is uh, lubricant free. So you're gonna go ahead and squeeze this. There's just that little kind of like clip around. You can see how it does give a little bit. I'm sure you guys can see that. Let's kind of bring that in closer for you here. Okay, so you're just gonna squeeze that and then just go ahead and push it back in and it'll allow that little piston to basically go back into place under tension and keep it retained where it needs to be. Now, I did test a little spot of this with um, cleanse oil and the Cerakote finish on this, this Tiger, tri tiger Stripe finish. Um, it looks like the uh, Cerakote has not been affected by it. It hasn't been stained by it. So at this point, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the, uh, the choke tube. Now there is a uh, choke tube tool that comes with this Breda. Unfortunately, I left it downstairs in the box. We're not gonna get it. I do have a universal we're gonna use, which is not a problem, okay? Now the uh, reason why I waited to pull the choke tube out is because I didn't wanna run the bore brush through this and, and the cotton brushes over all those threads. I didn't wanna risk having those threads get damaged. And if you really, really want to, after you get done cleaning off the choke tube, you know, you feel free to go ahead and uh, run another patch to the barrel if you need to, but we're just gonna go ahead and take these out and just wipe off the outsides. The inside is nice and shiny, nice and clean. Okay, drop oil on the patch. And again, uh, that uh, cleanse oil field and range cleaner, this is a lubricant and a cleaner, so you can do this like, apply a little bit if you want to, wipe it off and then apply one more for protective coat. 
and you're all set to go. So we're just gonna wipe off the choke tubes here. Just nice and clean inside, okay. And we're gonna go ahead and just take that patch. There's just a little bit of lubricant on it. Just use your pinky, get in there and just kind of wipe off those threads a little bit. Just make sure they have a little bit of lubricant on them. That also prevent them from seizing up if you happen to get any kind of moisture uh, in the barrel or if you're in a very uh, wet environment, etc. I believe it uses the Beretta or Benelli mobile choke system. So we're gonna hand tighten this back in as far as we can. Again, you want it snug, but you don't have to gorilla torque this thing, just enough to keep it in place and you'll be fine to go there. There we go, it's just nice and snug, it's not too tight. Now again, very, very thin coat of lubricant to the entire outside surface here. Just a couple drops of oil on a patch. Keep the oil outside of this regulator system and just go ahead and wipe off the whole barrel, including the rear where it goes into the uh, receiver. So you can go ahead and wipe this out with some oil too if you want to, make sure that that's got the lubricant on it. You wanna get that solvent off there. And I'm also going to go ahead and throw this one away because there's gonna be some solvent on this patch. Now it's nice and clean. There was a little bit of powder residue on it before. It has taken off a little bit of crud. The gun is a little bit dirty from the factory, but not too bad. There's definitely more oil over there on that magazine tube we'll need to take care of. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this off and we'll come back in a minute and we will tackle the bolt, uh, the charging handle, and all that other fun stuff, so hang tight. Okay, so just to show you the other side of the gun here, this is basically an operating rod. I guess maybe they call this a bit of a piston. It's gonna glide over the magazine tube. Uh, it does have some like assembly grease on it and stuff, that, some stuff that looks kinda nasty. We're definitely gonna get that out of there. Uh, so this part is gonna go into the bolt, so this is something that we'll have to go back together carefully, but it's really not that difficult. So let's go ahead and take out that uh, bolt assembly. Okay, now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take out the charging handle, so we should just be able to uh, pull it straight out. It just comes right out. Let's just go ahead and clean these parts off uh, one at a time as we take them out of the gun and then we'll be able to just easily reassemble them. I am just about out of cleanse oil. All right, I'll go ahead and wipe this off. Okay, we do have that little key notch on there. I'll show you where that's gonna go when you put it back together. I can't remember if it faces the front or the back, but it does make a difference. Okay, so just go ahead and wipe off your little charging handle here and just set that off to the side. Okay, now at this point, we should be able to uh, just carefully pull on this uh, piston sleeve or this sleeve right here and pull out. Go, just kind of wiggle it a little bit and the bolt, everything's just gonna come right out of here and just fall into four pieces, don't worry about it. All right, so this little tail that you have right here, uh, when we put it back together, this is gonna go into a little cup that's gonna be inside the receiver. There's basically like a, like a spring or an actuator, if you will. This little tail's gonna sit in it, so when you shoot the gun, it's gonna go back basically and actuate and move with the bolt and it's going to give spring tension to basically push that if i'm not mistaken it's going to basically push the, vo the bolt back forward and that's going to let you chamber another round so i'm going to set that off to the side now we don't need to do any more disassembly than this basically but there's a lot of crud on this so why don't we go and start off with this little operating rod right here this little um, piston if you will all right, a couple drops of oil on your cloth now if you're cleaning it for the first time you might want to apply this let it sit for a couple minutes uh, wipe it off with a dry cloth and come back and repeat and then hit it with a light coat of lubricant when you're all done with it It might take you a couple steps to get this clean This is very very dirty and you're gonna get a lot of muck on here and like I said, this was probably uh, Factory test fired and so on so we're gonna use a couple patches to get this clean Again, there's definitely some assembly oil that they use when they put this together Which is totally fine. It just helps ensure that parts kind of seat properly the first time it's used Okay, now to uh, scrub out the inside of that cylinder, we're just going to go ahead and put a patch on a jag here with a single piece cleaning rod and just go ahead and scrub out the inside of it. Now again, you can repeat this a couple times if you want to, depending on how dirty it is. The nice thing is, you know, the, more, the better maintenance you do on these guns, the more often you clean them, the easier it's going to be every time you come back from the range. That's not too bad. There really isn't that much in there. Okay, give it one last wipe off. It does have a nice little thin coat of oil on it, and we will set that off to the side. Now with your bolt, if you want to, you can use your bristle brush and scrub everything off if you need to. You can put some gun solvent on there if you want to, but the entire bolt does need to be coated in a light coating of oil because most of it does move. It is gonna get metal to metal contact and the more often you shoot the gun, the more you're gonna notice kind of the, uh, the wear and tear on the lugs and all those different parts. This little rod back here, you wanna make sure you do have some lubricant in between here also. I think they said that the hammer goes in between this part when you take out your trigger group, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Okay, go ahead and pull that out. Go ahead and just wipe this off. Again, apply a coat of oil, dry patch, one last coat of oil, and you're gonna be all set with this one. So this is pretty dirty. Okay, upper part of your bolt mechanism, we'll just go ahead and wipe it all off. Make sure you get these little tracks and rails. There's gonna be a lot of metal on metal contact in here. Just go ahead and wipe out the inside of this. Wipe out these little channels here. Again, if you wanna hit this with a solvent initially and then turn around and uh, 
use oil, you can do that. Uh, the front of your bolt here, go ahead and scrub that really good. Get in there with your extractor, make sure that looks nice. Now, do take a dry patch and go ahead and wipe off the, uh, the front here of your bolt face where your firing pin is. And what this will do is help ensure you don't get any oil down in there. That is nice and clean and it'll be well preserved. You're gonna be fine. All right, I'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll go on. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and remove the trigger pack. You can just clean out the inside of the receiver if you want to reassemble a gun, that's fine. But we're gonna go ahead and take out the trigger pack so we can get all this oil out of the inside of the receiver. If you don't have like any kind of an armor's block, you can just use a little roll of masking tape, just set it up there. And I've got a 5 30 seconds pin punch. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just tap this out. So there's a pin right here. Okay, you can see it right there, located just above the safety. And we're just going to go ahead and tap that out, and we will go from there. Oh, it comes right out. No problem, guys. Okay, to remove your trigger pack, your trigger housing, you're just going to pull back and out at the same time, just slowly. There you go. There's a little tiny uh, rod here on the back that you want to watch out for. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. We'll go ahead and clean off the trigger pack real quick. Now, obviously you wanna to try to keep the uh, trigger pack as uh, oil-free as possible. You know, you don't wanna to get too much stuff in here because it's gonna attract a lot of grime. It does say that any metal surfaces should have a light coat of oil on them according to the manual. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Just give everything a general wipe off. If there's a lot of crud on here, if there's a lot of muck, you can go ahead and brush it off if you want to with your bristle brush. Just brush it off gently. Just one drop of oil on a patch. Just make sure your hammer has a little drop of oil on it. Uh, make sure you don't pull the trigger. It looks pretty good. You can take some Q-tips of this if you need to, but for the most part, I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna take my needle oiler and I'm gonna put uh, one drop of oil just right here. Just put that in there. This is gonna give it a little bit of lubrication to go in there. Okay, just wipe that excess off. No problems there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and just set that off to the side and we'll go on to our next step. Okay, so earlier I was mentioning that you have this little tail on the back of the bolt that's gonna go back into a specific cup. You can see that cup right there. Let me show that to you. Light that up with my headlamp here. There's a little cup right here, and that's what that tail is gonna go into when you reassemble it. So it's always a good idea to have the trigger pack out before you reassemble it. Makes it easier to get this part back into place. Now the inside of this, we're just gonna go ahead and wipe it out with a patch with some oil on it, dry patch it, lubricate it one more time with a, a gentle coat of oil, and that's all you have to do for the inside of the receiver. It's very simple. Okay, so just looking at how you know dirty the rest of the gun is, I'm expecting it to uh, be a little bit dirty here inside, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're just gonna wipe it out. There are some little rails in here. I can see some of that copper grease in here. It really reminds me of the stuff that uh, Glock uses when they assemble firearms. It's kind of what it's like. Now, there are some channels in here. You wanna make sure that you have lubricant inside those channels that are inside the receiver. You'll fill them with your finger uh, when you're cleaning this out. Okay, go and flip the gun over. Using a lot of patches here because there is a lot of carbon, a lot of grease buildup on here and so on that we're trying to get rid of. Okay, so we're gonna go and wipe out this side. Get the, get the back of it back here towards the rear, inside of here, little latch right here, your release button mechanism, just make sure that's nice and clean. Clean off your follower. It's kind of ejection area, make sure this is nice and clean, including the inside of it. Okay, so at this point, we'll be able to take our bolt and just go ahead and put it back together as such. This is kind of the reverse of how we're going to install it, but I'm trying to show you this on the camera before we put it all back together. Now, when we put that operating rod back on, it's going to essentially look like this when it goes back into place here. It's gonna look just like that. And this whole mechanism is going to slide back into the receiver as such. You're gonna have to keep this on and at the same time so that nothing comes loose. But uh, again, you can check out those little channels and make sure you got some lubricant on there and you're gonna be in good shape. So this is essentially how we're going to slide it back on the gun, but this will be the opposite side that you're not gonna see as I'm putting it back together. Just to go ahead and slide your sleeve over your magazine tube. And as we guide this back in, again, this little metal flap right here, this uh, tail off the back of the bolt, you're gonna to wanna to hold this as you reassemble it. Uh, you can go ahead and go in from the right side here and push your finger underneath the tail as you push the uh, bolt back into place here as we kind of wiggle that back in. A little bit of a pain, but not too bad. And then we're going to guide that tail into the actuator back here, the little cup. And I'll show you what this is going to look like when it's in place, okay? A little bit of a pain. Okay, so if we uh, reassemble this properly, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, you can see how you got that... Uh, flap that tail off the back there. There we go. And you can see how the uh, mechanism sits. You got that operating rod. And that sleeve goes off the end of the barrel. This is upside down, just so you know. So if you want to do exactly what I do, this is how you're going to want to hold it, okay? 
Okay guys, so at this point what you wanna do is go ahead and grab the sleeve that's going around your magazine tube. You wanna make sure your little key notch that's cut out of the um, bolt of the charging handle is facing the rear. Go ahead and pull that back all the way and go ahead and seat your charging handle. Okay, now if this does not go back, don't force it, just take it out and eventually it'll just kinda of seat itself back into place properly. And if you can freely move it, you've reassembled it properly. Okay, so at this point go ahead and take your uh, spacer and go ahead and put that over the tube. Just kind of bring it in here gently and just go ahead and rest it up against the back. Put that in there. Might have to pull a little bit. Now it's under some spring tension, so this is gonna take a while before we uh, get everything totally seated, but just hang tight. So it's just gonna sit there. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of the trickiest part of putting the barrel back on. You know, you want this all to rest back here once it's all assembled, but it's not gonna happen like that initially. So what I did was I took the spacer and pulled it down about halfway, and you're gonna have to kind of move the spacer back with the barrel at the same time in order to clear this uh, flashing, this molding up here. So hopefully you guys can see this okay. We'll go ahead and just take the barrel, and we're gonna put it over this tube. Now if you start to kind of, you're gonna have to kind of guide both of them about the same time as you put it back together. Kind of keep this part down here as you pull back. Kind of give it just a little bit of a wiggle there. Okay. There we go. Can I pull back a little bit on that charging handle, take the tension off, go ahead and reseat the barrel, and we are good to go. Now, when I let it go, it's going to come back out, but again, we'll take care of that here in just a moment. Okay, now, if you did it properly, you should have definitely some free movement like this, okay? This is totally normal, okay? When we put that handguard back on and put the magazine cap on, it's going to keep everything braced to the rear, and you're going to be all set to go, so hang tight. Okay, now, at this point, uh, this is pretty much what we're sitting with, right? Okay, that's fine. Again, you've got that uh, kickback system, that actuator there. Go ahead and take your handguard and slide that over. Okay, go ahead and lock that to the rear. Okay. Go ahead and grab your magazine tube and go ahead and screw that on. Okay, and you're going to feel that pushing all this furniture back at this point, okay? That's fine. Once it stops, you are all set. Okay, it's nice and snug. There we go. You don't have to over torque it. You don't have to... Go too crazy on it, but it uh, should be sitting pretty good. At this point, everything is basically reassembled back into one piece and we're ready to move on. Okay, so don't forget, like I said before, you've got a little pin right here. There's a hole right here that you're gonna feel, okay? Uh, and again, you wanna make sure you've got that bar in the actuator cup, which it is. If we look down there, we can see it. Okay, now at this point, what you wanna do is go ahead and take your trigger pack and you're gonna put it in that hole. Just go ahead and just drop it right back in. You're all set to go. And we will go ahead and hammer that uh, pin back into place to keep the trigger pack into okay, place. Next step here, we're going to put this pin into place. But something that you want to do that's going to make life a lot easier, this um, carrier stop button down here, press that. And that's going to allow the trigger pack to fully seat itself. And uh, make sure that that little button right there stays pressed in and it should lock itself into place. At this point, you can go ahead and take your pin. It should be properly aligned. And we can just go ahead and tap it right in. There we go. So again, don't forget to push that button in. If you don't, the trigger pack's gonna be sitting down just like a tenth of an inch out of place and that pin is not gonna go in. All right, let's go on to our next step. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and reattach our little QD points here. So just go ahead and set those back on the barrel. Uh, I think they were probably right about here's what we're looking at. Okay, go ahead and grab the uh, piece from the other side here. Remember, just one screw at a time, they're gonna kind of go opposite of each other. There we go. Go ahead and get your little hex key or allen key going on there. Okay, start to screw the two together. Now I'm not gonna totally tighten it on one side. I don't want it to kinda like wedge out or anything like that. So we're gonna put one screw in, then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. So we're gonna set this on the tape here. There we go. There we go. And we'll go ahead and just set the other screw back in here. Hopefully this is in focus for you guys. I never know until I'm editing the video how stuff looks on your end, so. Again, this will help keep that magazine tube secured on there, that little end cap secured into place. Okay, remember you don't want to over tighten it. They don't give you any torque settings for this, so I just don't worry about it. I mean, once it basically stops, you're good to go. And this is actually breaking at about 30 pounds on my Wheeler fat wrench. I think it's about 30 here. Let's see if this does it. Keep going. Yeah, it's breaking at uh, a little over 30 pounds, just to kind of give you an idea. But I would be very careful. If you get, you know, if it's snug and it stops, you definitely want to stop at that point. All right, we'll go ahead and finish up with the uh, final check here, and we'll go so from there. So the last thing we're going to do is function test it, and then I'm just going to take a drop of oil on a patch and wipe off the outside metal surfaces, and that's pretty much going to be it. So if you've got this button pressed in, what will happen is your carrier is going to lock back, just like this, okay? Um, I'm not going to let it slam home, but just kind of keeping my hand on the, the handle right here. I'm just going to press the button and just slowly release it. And then after that, you can 
go ahead and cycle it a couple times. There you go. If you want to go ahead and check the chamber, it's empty. I'll go ahead and dry fire. Just to ensure that the gun's going to actuate and fire. There you go. It locks back into place. Press the button to release. And you are all set to go. Okay, guys, so this is my cleaning of the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Uh, this is probably cleaning video number 75 or 80 at this point for the channel. I do want to say this, apologies for the spotlight. I know it's a little bit annoying at times, but it's super dark when you're trying to film and have these, you know, all black guns with dark parts inside. You're trying to see inside the chamber and stuff. I just usually light it up and I don't have the best uh, lighting in the apartment, unfortunately, for this kind of filming, but it is what it is. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, be very patient with it. Don't rush it. Go back and watch and rewatch clips of this video if you need to, to help you figure out the whole process. It's okay if you got, you know, oil on that barrel. You don't have to keep the gun excessively lube, but just make sure that all the metal surfaces have some sort of uh, protective coating on them and you should be all set to go. So this is Travis P11. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also over on, uh, let's see, GunStreamer and YouTube, GunTube.org. Uh, don't forget we have a little podcast that we do called Caliber Corner, which is Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and we talk guns and ammo. We have a good time and we talk about hunting and the outdoors and outdoor shooting sports and all that fun stuff. So please like and subscribe. So in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Oh, last thing, if there's anything you do differently when you're reassembling or if you have any tricks of the trade for this particular type of action or this gun, let me know. I'm sure there's going to be some other A300 Ultima owners out there that say, well, I do it this way or that way or this is how it should be done. Let me know. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys do. This is my first time taking it apart and reassembling it. But again, it wasn't too difficult. We've had more difficult guns before, like the High Point JXP-10. But anyway, <laughs> you guys have fun, be safe, and as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.